This video is kindly sponsored by AG1 by Athletic Greens, the simple way to better nutrition. Hey, 42 here. In 2017, Oxfam reported that the eight richest men on earth owned the same wealth as the poorest half of the world's population put together. That stat highlights something a little bit odd. Most of us like to think of our society as a meritocracy, that the more skillful, intelligent and hardworking we are, the more successful we'll be. But broadly speaking, talent is normally distributed across the population. Wealth, on the other hand, very much isn't. It's a reasonable bet that the eight richest men on the planet are all extremely capable. But it's hard to imagine they have the skills to match the 3.5 billion poorest people combined. So what's going on? To find out, let's take a look at the man who topped the rich list when Oxfam released that eye-opening stat, Bill Gates. AG1 by Athletic Greens is an essentialist nutrition company that has created a movement around simplifying your health routine. And it's not just for athletes, it's for anybody that wants to take ownership of their health. AG1 is also giving my community an immune supporting free one year supply of vitamin D, as well as five free travel packs with your first purchase. But more on that later. There's no reason that looking after yourself should be difficult. That's why AG1 has made it super easy. In fact, one of their convenient daily servings is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. For me, however, it was my focus where I really noticed a difference. I'm so busy every day with many different projects competing for my time and I always find it really hard to focus on one thing. But after trying AG1, I feel constantly locked in on my goals and my productivity has definitely increased. Did I mention it also tastes really good, which is quite a surprise considering how many nutritional goodies are packed into it. So if you're looking for a maintainable way to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet, then go to the link in the description now to get a year's supply of vitamin D3K2 and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. This is a game changer for supporting your immune system. AG1 provides your body with everything it needs for optimal performance every single day. In 2017, Gates had a personal wealth just shy of $90 billion. It's hard to put that into perspective on a human scale. So for reference, $90 billion is roughly the GDP of Ethiopia, a country with a population of over 100 million people. Or if you prefer, it was more than 0.1% of the GDP of our entire planet at the time. So. Did Bill Gates attain this frankly ridiculous fortune thanks to his remarkable talents or through some other means? Well, let's start with the talent part. Bill Gates is an extremely smart guy. Actually, smart doesn't really cover it. His IQ is estimated to be around 160. That's about the same as Einstein's, comfortably in genius territory. Gates is almost famous for being an almost inhumanly hard worker. By some accounts, he would clock up to 120 hours in the office per week in the early days of Microsoft. Enough to send Tim Ferriss into cardiac arrest. On the surface, it sounds like an open and shut case. Bill Gates was, and probably still is, a hard-working genius. So the fact he became unimaginably successful is no fluke. And that's absolutely true. The problem is, it isn't the whole truth. You see, there was another factor at play that helped Bill Gates achieve his phenomenal success. He was absurdly lucky. Let's get the obvious bits of luck out of the way first. He was born in one of the most prosperous countries on earth, the USA. His parents were wealthy and successful, and they had enough spare cash lying around to send him to an elite private school by the name of Lakeside, still ranked as one of the best private high schools in the US to this day. 
that's about as good a start in life as any human could hope to have. And there's more. The year after Gates enrolled at Lakeside, the school started a club offering students remote access to a powerful mainframe computer. That might not sound like a big deal, but this was 1968, when computer access essentially didn't exist in high schools. And home PCs hadn't even been invented yet. Lakeside was quite literally one of the only schools in the world giving its students access to a powerful computer at the time. Which meant Bill Gates had the opportunity to learn to code younger than almost anyone in history before him. One of the other lucky ones given that opportunity was Paul Allen, one of Gates' classmates at Lakeside and the man who he would go on to found Microsoft with. Bill Gates is a brilliant guy, there's no disputing that. But he isn't unique. That 160 IQ of his, yeah, around 0.03% of the population can match that. That's over 2 million people worldwide who are, on paper, just as intelligent as he is. And considering that sample size, some will inevitably be just as driven and hardworking as he was too. The reason you've never heard of them, whilst Bill Gates is one of the richest men in history, it's nothing to do with skill, talent, or hard work. Just plain old luck. <laughs> or at least, chance. Luck is a bit like money. It doesn't seem all that important until it runs out. But the idea that luck plays a big role in our lives is surprisingly controversial. Most successful people, even the lucky ones, work pretty hard, and it's never nice to hear that your achievements owe as much to luck as your grit and determination. I'm not trying to say that talent and hard work count for nothing, they count for a hell of a lot, hard work especially. But there's no guessing around it. Hidden dice rolls from the great big random number generator in the sky have a huge impact on how all of our lives turn out. Bill Gates is an example of what can happen in a perfect talent luck storm. He was the right person in the right place at the right time in history, and that was enough to make him the richest man alive. Had his parents chosen any other school in the US, he would have been deprived of both his edge and his business partner, and Microsoft would never have happened. That isn't just an opinion, by the way. Gates has said so himself on more than one occasion. Of course, no Microsoft doesn't mean his life would have ended in failure, but it might well have made tens of billions of dollars difference in terms of his net worth. All from a seemingly inconsequential decision, like which school he went to. Think of life as being a bit like an old school RPG. To begin with, your character gets assigned a bunch of random characteristics, like race and base attributes. You have no control over these, and they may either help you or hinder you when the game begins. Your childhood is basically the tutorial. You get the chance to improve some of your stats and specialise in a couple of skill trees. Unfortunately, most of us don't really know how the game works at this point, so we just mess around a bit and end up underleveled. Towards the end of the tutorial, you'll be asked to pick your character's class. Mage, Rogue, Accountant, and then the game starts for real. But no two game worlds are the same. Some people are dumped in the middle of a ridiculously difficult region, surrounded by hordes of high-level enemies, whilst others have unlimited resources in their inventory and a bunch of powerful NPCs to protect them. Being blessed with good stats, resources and favourable in-game events doesn't guarantee you'll win, Over. it just makes things a hell of a lot easier. It's worth pointing out that being lucky in life doesn't have to be some profound sliding doors coincidence like 
a maths genius attending one of the only schools in the US with access to a computer, most of the time, it's much simpler than that. If what I told you about Bill Gates sounded familiar, it may well be that you've read Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, where his story is covered in some detail. If you have, you'll already be familiar with something called the relative age effect, where success in various fields is influenced by something as seemingly unimportant as which month of the year you're born in. The concept is pretty simple. Children born just after the cutoff date for any given activity, be it starting school or joining a sports team, have a big advantage over those born just before the cutoff date. That's because they're always the oldest in any given cohort, meaning they're just that bit more physically and intellectually developed than their peers. In Outliers, Gladwell illustrates the power of the relative age effect by talking about ice hockey, but since that one's been done to death, I've found a more British example. Football. If you're watching from across the ponds, that suck- No. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I can't do it. Intuitively, it feels like football should be a strict meritocracy, with the better players rising to the top and going on to have the most successful careers. If that were truly the case, the month in which a top player was born should be irrelevant. We'd see a random array of birth dates spread throughout the year amongst professionals. But we don't see that. In fact, it isn't even close. Of the 30 most capped England players of all time, six were born in September. That's 20% or roughly 2.5 times what we should see if the month in which you were born had no impact on your chances of playing for England. By the way, the significance of September is that that's the month school starts in the UK, meaning kids born in September are always the oldest in their school year. So, have a guess how many of the 30 most capped England footballers of all time were born in August making them the youngest kids in the year during their school days. Let me tell you, it's zero. Not one. Okay, I know what you're thinking. This is a small sample, so maybe that's just some kind of anomaly. But listen to this. None of the 30 most capped England footballers of all time were born in July either. And only one was born in June. That means six times as many of England's 30 most capped players were born in September than in June, July and August combined. To put that another way, something as utterly random as the month you're born has a profound impact on your chances of becoming an England footballing legend. At first, it might not be entirely obvious why the relative age effect has such a huge impact. After all, as children get older, a difference of 11 or 12 months in age becomes less important, and eventually irrelevant. The problem is, by then, it's already too late. The good footballers in each school year are identified young when being the oldest offers them a huge physical advantage. Those players are then far more likely to find themselves as part of school or local teams as they grow up and so they play more regularly, receive more praise, and get more coaching. As a result, instead of the younger players catching up over time as their age becomes less of a factor, they actually fall further behind. By the way, that lone June birthday amongst England's 30 most capped footballers belongs to Frank Lampard. And whilst he may have been born in an unlucky month, that bad luck was wiped clean off the slate by an even bigger slice of good luck that surely gave his career a huge boost. His father, Frank Lampard Sr., played football for England too. Fittingly enough, Frank Lampard Sr. was born on the 20th of September. Unsurprisingly, the relative age effect has a big impact in academia too, and for exactly the same reasons. 
In 2012, students with autumn birthdays were 25% more likely to be accepted at the UK's most prestigious universities, Oxford and Cambridge, than students with summer birthdays. Predictably, perhaps the most important luck factor in most of our lives comes from the socio-economic situation we're born into. In the US, SAT scores are heavily correlated with family income, with a 2015 analysis finding that average SAT scores were lowest amongst families earning under $20,000 a year and highest amongst families making over $200,000 a year. Now, you might assume those numbers simply imply children from high-income families are, on average, more intelligent than those from low-income families. But the evidence doesn't back that up. According to a 2019 study conducted in the US, recently discovered genetic markers for academic ability are fairly evenly distributed across the population, regardless of family wealth. And yet, the least academically gifted children from high-income families are more likely to attain a university degree than the most academically gifted children from low-income families. Just think about what that means for a second. If you want to go to university, it's quite literally better to be rich than to be clever. Up until this point, we've been looking at whether talent or luck determines success. But the thing is, that question is actually kind of flawed. According to the Cambridge English Dictionary, luck is defined as success or failure, apparently brought about by chance rather than through one's own actions. And when you think about it, a big slice of your own level of talent comes from things that are entirely outside of your control. Take intelligence, for example. It's generally thought that IQ is mostly a product of your genes and the environment you grew up in. Two things you have essentially no control over. Which means if you happen to have been born with an above average dose of talent, that in itself is pretty lucky. And you aren't any more deserving of success than someone who got less lucky than you in the innate talents department. It's also worth mentioning that Success is not a cinnamon for wealthy. Even if that's how most people think these days, success can and should mean different things to different people. And money is only one small part of it. Earlier in this video, I compared life to an RPG. But maybe it's better to think of it as a bit like a lottery. Only each of us starts out with a different number of tickets. Anyone lucky enough to be born to affluent, loving parents and given a quality education starts out life with a lot of lottery tickets to their name, whilst people who get a rough start in life hardly have any, maybe none at all. As depressing a concept as that is, no matter your starting point in life, you can always get more tickets by working hard, studying, gaining new skills and meeting new people. It's no guarantee you'll eventually hit the success jackpot, but it certainly increases your odds. Thanks for watching. Good news, you can now pre-order my new book, Bread and Circuses. What did the Romans ever do for us? It's a wild and witty journey for a thousand years of unexpected Roman history told in a refreshing way and packed full of incredible and unbelievable stories. Copies are selling out fast, so pre-order yours today to lock it in. Thank you.